Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to do a 713 um, uh, because this problem is a little bit more complex than the other one I showed you that should help you with some of the problems towards you know, the last few problems that I assigned. So let's read the problem. It says, since it has been in business, Freefin has paid a dollar per share annual dividend. The company plans to pay a dollar dividend for the next two years. Beginning in the next three years, beginning in three years, however, Freefin plans to increase the dividend by 8% each year for the remainder of the company's life. If investors require a 17% rate of return to purchase Freefin's common stock, what should be the market value of a stock today? Okay, so um, we're not going to count the one at time zero because that's just been paid. Because if I buy the stock right now, that dividend's already paid. It says it has paid. Okay, so starting year one is a dollar. And then year two is a dollar, and then year three it increases by eight percent. So I'm going to take that dollar that I earned in year two, I'm going to take one dollar times parentheses one plus 0.08 because the eight percent. So that's going to equal dollar eight in the third year. And the fourth year is going to be whatever the dollar eight times 1.08 in the fourth year is going to be that. So it's going to increase and increase all the way up to infinity. And yeah, so if I take all these cash flows and I collapse them back to time zero, in other words, find the present value of all these individual cash flows, what is it? What is that going to be worth today using this rate of return? Okay, so let's go ahead and put this into Excel. First of all, we can say uh, D, D hat. It's hard to write that little hat on top of the, on top of the letter, so we'll just call it D hat sub 1 is one dollar okay and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this one I'm gonna go control shift F for font alternate B for subscript and enter and then I'm gonna drag that down D hat sub 2 is the same thing so I'm gonna drag that down too alright and also we know that G now see how I type G it thinks I want given because I typed that above so I'm gonna I'm gonna hit a space and then a backspace to get rid of that given. And what is G? The growth the dividend growth rate is eight percent. Okay. And we know R sub S, the required rate of return for the stockholders, is 17%. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this S. Control Shift F for font, alternate B, enter or something. Okay. So those are the four things we're given. We're given the dollar and the dollar and eight and the seventeen percent. So what do we want to find? We want to find the price, the estimated price of the stock right now. Okay, what's that equal? Okay, that we call that p hats of zero. The hat means we don't know it, but what 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 is it? What do we estimate it to be? Okay. Now this is just one way. This is just one theory on how you can. Estimate. All right. So for a solution, we have to devise some kind of strategy on how we're going to collapse all these back. This one, this dollar right here, I can just find the present value of that using simple Excel formula. This dollar here, I can find the value of that using, using you know, cloud, you know, to find the present value of a future value over two periods. But we don't want to. Excel, we actually could do this. I'm probably going to show you this towards the end of the video, but I'm going to use something called the Gordon Growth Model. The Gordon Growth Model is on page page 117. I might not call it the Gordon Growth Model in, uh, in the book. I don't know. It might somewhere. But that's really actually what that's called. And that's equation 7.4. Okay. And what we're going to do. So we're going to figure out what these growing dividends are worth here at the period of two. So first of all, in order to do that, in order to use the Gordon Growth Model, we've got to find out what the dividend is at period three. So I'm going to copy this down. And I'm going to change this to a three, so I'm going to highlight it at period three. Well, I did it right here. It's simply equal to the dollar we had at period two times one plus um, G. Okay, that's what we have here, 1 plus G. And close the parentheses. That's a dollar eight. Now I gotta format that dollars, right? And so now we can use a Gordon growth model. So now we can find P. I'm just gonna copy this. 
and I'm going to change this. Now this is going to be the P hat at, at time period 2. So I'm going to tell you, what are all these cash flows collapsed here to this time period 2? It's not including the cash flow here at 2. So it's going to be equal to, according to that equation I just told you on page 113, it's going to be equal to the, the dividend on the period before, which is we just calculated, it's equal to this, divided by this minus this. Okay, so if I use the same format, I'm going to click on here and go Format Painter. It's $12. So all these cash flows collapse right here to period 2 is worth $12. So now we're able to calculate what we want to find. So I'm going to copy that down. So what we want to find is going to be equal to the present value. Well, first we're going to take this, the present value of this cash flow. So the rate, the rate is always going to be the 17%. The number of periods is one, right? It's one period. There's no payment because this is considered a future value in this case. And the future value is this one right here. I'm going to close the parentheses. And then I'm going to look at period two. Period two, I have, I'm going to also go present value. And the rate again is 17%. The number of periods is two because it's period two. Skip the payment. In the future value, I have the $1 dividend, which is right here. And then, I have, and then I'm going to add them. Let me add these together. So it's going to be the $1 dividend here plus this $12, which was all these collapse back to there. Okay. And now I made a mistake here. This, this one here, this is period one. It actually should be this one, right? But it's still a dollar, so it's really not. So this is B2 because it's that one. And this is B3 because it's that dollar. Okay. So anyway, it's going to be the same answer anyway. Okay. So we get our answer. And I take it out. It says percent. I don't want percent. I want dollar. So I'm going to click above Format Painter. So it's $1.35. Okay. So that's the answer. It's as simple as that. Now I'm going to show you an alternate solution to show you really what's happening. And I call this my brute force method. And some people, my students in my classroom class don't like this, but I like to show it just to, that don't be shown only one way to solve it, but I like to show, I'll just show you another way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy this down here, because this is where the answer is going to be. And what I'm going to go is I'm going to go period. And the cash flow, we're going to get that period, and the present value. I'm just going to start out with period, uh, Period zero, we don't have it. It's not even going to have it. We're going to go period one, two, three, four, five. We'll call it six periods. For period one, we have a dollar. Actually, it equals that, right? And period two is equal to that. And period three, we could go here, but let's just go ahead and calculate it. It's going to be equal to whatever we had in period two times, well, what's the growth rate? It's going to be one plus whatever the growth rate is. Well, we have that right here. Now, we got to think about this because I'm going to copy this formula down and I want it to stay on that same growth rate. So I could type dollar signs in front of that to make it always stay there when I copy it down. But it's easier just to hit F4. And if I enter, I get the dollar eight. So it's the same thing as I have up here. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy my format. Well, I'll click, I'll click the dollar. In fact, let's make all these dollar. Okay. So now I can just double click and it goes to $1.17 in period four, dollar twenty-six, dollar. And that's where we see this going up and up and up as we go out to infinity. So the present value of each one of these is going to be equal to the present value. Well again, now this rate we're going to use this rate because it's the rate that their the stockholders require on each one of these on these cash flows. Again, I'm going to hit F4 to lock it, because when I copy it down, I want it to stay on this 17%. Number of periods, now I'm going to use this. And I don't have to lock this. I want this to be a relative reference as I want to copy it. But as I copy it down, I want it to go to the each next period, right? So I don't, I don't, and then I'm going to skip the payments, so I'm going to do two commas. And the future value is this dollar that we have right here. So if I hit enter, so a dollar a year from now is worth 85 cents to me now. So if I double click, 
a dollar two years from now is worth 73 cents. So this two, this dollar is worth 73 cents. This three dollars, this this dollar eight on period three is worth 67 cents. Period four has a dollar 17. I'm going to get paid. So you can see, even though the even though the dividend is going up, the present value of these dividends is going down. So if I simply add all these together, then I'm going to get an estimate of what the present value is. But this isn't a very good estimate because I want to take it out a lot more years because I want to simulate infinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight five and six. And I'm going to drag down. You can see right here, it says 1920. It has a little number right here. As I drag down, let's just go out maybe, I don't know, I'm going to go out 100 years. So go out to that little number that says 100. Okay. And then I can go back up here. I can go down here and I can double click it and I'll copy that cell all the way down. I can double click here and I copy that all the way down. So if I go down now, now I see that these are worth zero dollars. If I took it out more places, it wouldn't be exactly zero, but it's somewhere around zero. Okay. So now what I can do is I can just add all these together. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go equal sum. And I'm going to start with these two. And I'm going to show you a shortcut instead of having to highlight all the way down. I'm going to hold down the shift key, S-H-I-F-T. I'm going to tap the end key once, E-N-D, and the end key. I'm going to hit it once. I'm going to tap the down arrow once. It goes all the way to the bottom, and then I simply hit enter. And it puts the estimate in there, and the estimate's $1.35, which is the same answer as I got here. So I call this the brute force method. This kind of shows you what's going on. Um, so that's it for that video. I hope it helps a little bit. See you next time.